And we're live with the Check This Guy Show. Uh, welcome, everyone. Today's guest is uh, Greg Armstrong, and he's here all the way from uh, BC. Uh, thanks for coming we're to the show. St. John, BC. Yeah, all the way up north. Hello, everybody. And uh, we, we've known each other for many years, um, all the way back since what was that? Uh, junior high. Grade seven. Holy crap. Grade seven. I'm pretty sure. So that would be 2006, September. Oh crap! Who'd have thought you'd have facial hair when we were that age? Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Like if I, like I remember even when I was twenty, I was like, I don't think I'm gonna be able to grow a beard. <laughs> I still can't uh, grow a beard. I took like a before and well, after, and uh, so like when COVID hit, I thought, okay, I'm not gonna shave because mm-hmm. I couldn't go to hairdressers anyway, and I'm not gonna meet people. And uh, I took a before and an after for six months, no shave, no haircut, and after six months, my hair was out. But there was still no beard. (laughs) And I took photos before and after. They're like, I don't see the difference. (laughs) (laughs) It's the exact same. That's hilarious. Fail of being Asian. Um, It happens. I was, I I let mine go. And then a couple weeks ago, I went to go get a haircut. But what I was telling the hairdresser was like, oh, just trim my hair, but then leave the beard. Like, I just want it cleaned up a little bit. And like, I even showed the guy like a picture of what I wanted. He was like, sweet shaves it all off oh no like i'd been growing that thing since march and it was probably down to like here type of thing i guess podcast yeah. people can't but like probably like five six inches You're and yeah right. he just like yeah i totally got understand what you mean no what no problem shaved it all off i was like oh well <laughs> no tip for you <laughs> it was back but it was it was pretty disappointing i was really sad oh man the thing is you've got this lumberjack uh santa claus thing going on over there and it kind of works with the your particular beard yeah like I can't pull that off, but uh, it kind of works really well when you're doing those commercials. <laughs> oh yeah, you know, like uh, people, people, you know, they respect a man with a beard. I guess <laughs> you know, so he knows of, about tools. What is up yeah. with those commercials, anyways? Those things are awesome. How does that? How did that come about? Basically, what happened was my company was like, "Hey, you want to be the marketing guy?" And I'm like, "Yeah, sure. Why not? I'll, I'll make up some random stuff." And then I came up with a couple commercial ideas. Uh, the main one that got a lot of traction was two years ago, I carved pumpkins with power tools. Yeah, that was awesome. We had, a, we had a big power tool sale going on and I did that and everybody liked it a lot. And I was like, sweet. So then I did a commercial where we did like a bunch of um, like a lame Christmas present with a bunch of socks. And then we replaced all the presents with power tools. And even like this like <laughs> old kid was like, oh, sweet, a chainsaw. I'm on my way. Yeah. And so like just just random things I came up with. But then like. Ever since then, I haven't like filmed one since <laughs> this was like two years ago, because basically what happens now is I come up with an idea or or something and then they go, ah, we'll just wait until next time. And then mm. we just never use it. So I'm like, oh, OK, because no I was problem. waiting for you to become the next sham. Wow, guy or the next yeah, uh, yeah. the flex, flex tape, tape flex seal. Yeah. This is didn't bring out a power tool start slicing up pumpkins. Uh, yeah, I was expecting that. Uh, no, I, that's I was awesome. trying my best, but it just uh, it, we're, we're kind of working on. Basically, what happened is my company is now merged with a bigger company, Ooh, and we're right. kind of chill, still trying to figure out the kinks and whatnot. And like they, they still say they say they want to do more commercials, which is great, but it's more like they're in a whole different city than I am. So Ooh. it's like we have to like try to film videos and edit videos through you know like Zoom and whatnot. It just turns into a huge, huge debacle. So we're still trying to figure out our our system basically. But uh, yeah, yeah. We'll, hopefully we'll have more commercials soon. But we'll see. Yeah, I can't really imagine how you can run a business over zoom like i mean you i, I don't know <laughs> most of the time it's fine it's literally just marketing like basically like mm. everybody else in the building is the exact same as they were before but now that our marketing team is trying to like coincide with each other that's the biggest that's just the biggest hiccup we're running into but we're working on it so well i guess we'll in your case out. at least people still have to do renovations it doesn't really matter whether it's on season off season covid no covid you still got to fix stuff up it's not going to be affected right yeah, and actually up in the north here, we didn't have that many cases. Oh, really? Like, our restrictions were way more loose than everywhere else in Canada. Like um, like even in BC, Vancouver was way more strict about it than northern BC. Yeah. Because yeah. like there's just such a lower population and nobody was like traveling or anything. So a lot of the places were still running the entire time during quarantine. So it's, yeah. uh, it's a different it's, – it's, it's funny to think about how different – like, because of how big Canada is, how everything yeah. can be so different, even though you're in the same country. Like, it cracks me up sometimes. Yeah, because it seems like the strictest stuff is supposedly where I am. Mm. Uh, here, sure. 
But uh, it sounds like the further you go north, people don't even really know. Like, no, it's no difference. Like, we don't have a mandatory mask rule or anything like that. Oh, like, wow. I think some places, like, there's a bigger city in Alberta that's up north, Grand Prairie, that is starting to instigate that because they have such a bigger population. But, like, here and all the surrounding areas, nobody has a mask mandatory rule or anything like that. Yeah. So, just how it goes. I know when, when, when like, the rules first started, we were a lot more strict because it was like, oh, you got to follow the rules. But then it just slowly, like, relaxed over time. And it's not just my story. It was, like, every place here. So... Yeah. Northern, northern living. It's what we do. <laughs> I think the thing that was interesting to me was not so much what stopped working, but what things actually started exploding afterwards. Mm, yeah. Like, uh, for example, podcasts. Yeah. Every, uh, everybody started a podcast. Yeah. So, yeah. Tell me about your podcast. Let's, how did that get thing get started? Yeah. So my podcast for anybody interested is called Comic Book Gentleman. Uh, it is uh, a comic book podcast. We talk everything comic books from the books, the actual books to the TV shows, to the movies. Um, what we do is we deep dive into uh, specific topics. So the way it started was years ago, my boss is actually a bigger nerd than I am. And him <laughs> and I would constantly have arguments in the office about comic books. Like just all the time, we're, all of our coworkers and employees were just like, can yeah, you guys yeah. shut up? Like, yeah, like, no, 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 no. Not only are we not going to shut up, we're going to take this global. <laughs> yeah. So I kept telling him like, man, we should do a podcast. We should do a podcast. Like even before Corona and whatnot, we should hmm. do a podcast. And so eventually, I think it was like January, February, he was finally like, fine, fine, fine. Let's do a podcast. And he actually was like, but if we're going to do it, we're going to do it right. So hmm. he bought like the most expensive mics he possibly could and like that stuff. But then Corona hit. So we're not technically supposed to be in the same room together. So then we had to figure out like online and all that stuff. But yeah, so me and my buddy, me and my boss, Dave, we, we discuss comic books. What we like to say is that we have two different perspectives on it because he's a lot older than I am. So he has kind of like that older single issue reading comic book um, uh, mentality. Whereas I'm the younger audience that has the graphic novels and we grew up on the movies and, and yeah, whatnot. Yeah. So we have a lot of interesting conversations. Our he's last... Like- Go ahead. So he's like, uh, this is not authentic. And you're like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He makes fun of me all the time. Like, he's always like, oh, you don't even know what real comics are. And like, <laughs> like, you, like when back in my day, we didn't even have a movie, you know, type of thing. Yeah, yeah. He always rails when you about that. But then I'm just like, I don't know. I grew up with TV shows and movies the entire time. So I don't know what you're talking about, Boomer. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I, I, I guess it's kind of interesting to see. Do he approve of the new remakes of everything? Because they're all completely different now than what they yeah, used to it's, be, right? It's, it's hit and miss. Like mm-hmm. he, like we've talked about this a lot where it's like, it depends, like if they take one of his favorite storylines and they absolutely butcher it, he's like, I, you know, give me my money back type of thing. <laughs> but then I'm just like, oh no, it's a good movie. I don't really care if they messed up the storyline type of thing. So it just yeah. kind of depends, on the, depends on the movie and, and depends on, you know, the situation and whatnot. Cause we like, it's funny. Cause I find the characters he doesn't normally read all the time is the movies he enjoys more. <laughs> cause like, he's a huge, oh, fan. he's too dedicated. Yeah, so he, he's a huge Spider-Man fan, so he hates all the Spider-Man movies because they're not authentic. Oh, they're not and then right. when it comes to like Deadpool, which he doesn't read very often, he mm-hmm. loves the Deadpool movies type of thing. So yeah, they probably don't really follow the originals at all, right? Oh, no, not at all. But it's so funny, you don't even care. You're just like, don't give a damn. <laughs> it doesn't no. matter at that point. Oh, we did we did a podcast where we talked about all the Fox movies, including New Mutants, which just came out in August, mm-hmm. and we we kind of ranked them all, and it was pretty yeah. funny because it was like. Again, the storylines where we love them, you know, and they butchered it, we're like, oh, that's garbage. But then the ones that had nothing to do with anything, it was just a good time. We were like, yeah, it's a great movie. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, so, this was enjoyable. I don't know what was supposed to happen, so it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, See, that's what, the- when I watch a movie, I have to make sure I don't watch the trailer. Mm-hmm. Or if I start the trailer, as soon as I start to like, I have to stop right away. Oh, yeah. Because that's going to yeah, ruin it. I'm okay with spoilers. Like, I've always been fine. Like, people can tell me, like, you know, um, I'm trying to think of a big spoiler. I can't even remember right now. Like in Dark Knight Rises, oh, Talia al Ghul is the actual child mm. from the pit. I'd be like, oh, that's fine. I'm going to go watch it now because now yeah. I want to see mm. why. You know, like that's not mm. a, like it doesn't, it doesn't decent, like de-incentivize me to go see it. It actually incentivizes me more because now I'm like, well, I want to see how they pulled this off type of thing. So I've always, I've always been fine with spoilers. Although I will admit, it sucks when a trailer makes you think it's one thing. And then the movie's completely different, or even oh. the video game, you're just like, well, that was a, like, this sucks now. <laughs> oh, I see. Interesting. So you're the kind of, so does that mean that you can't watch horror movies then? 
because oh, you don't I know what's watch, happening. I can't watch horror movies uh, even knowing what's happening. Like it's too creepy for me, man. Too creepy really? for me. <laughs> Whitney, my wife and I, we started dating because she told me, "Oh, I'm a I'm a big horror movie buff. Let's watch." It was Friday the Thirteenth. Oh and yeah. She was like, "Let's watch a scary movie," and I'm like, "Well, I'm I'm pooping myself here, mm-hmm. but I'll do it for you because you're hot." And, uh, and then, so she, so we started dating and that was our, our, um, our, our thing was to watch scary movies on Friday the 13th or whatever. But then after a couple months of dating, she suddenly was like, yeah, no, I hate horror movies. <laughs> she just me. suddenly realized they were too creepy for her. And she's like, yeah, no, never again. So we literally haven't watched a horror movie since we've been together. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, or literally. is that one of those things that she's like, I don't like it. I don't like it. But no, no, I know. She, Cause I've talked to her family and they all said, yeah, she used to watch horror movies all the time. But for hmm. some reason, just recently, she's just like, nope, can't handle it anymore. And we just, and again, it's one of those funny things where it's like, that's why we started dating was because of Friday the 13th and, and okay. horror movies. And then now, nope, never watched it again. <laughs> ah, no, I, I couldn't watch horror movies until, uh, until I moved, until I moved here. And then I thought, no, I'm running out of films to watch. <laughs> uh, I'll give it a shot. But uh, I don't know. I don't. It doesn't seem to bother me anymore. But yeah, I used to not be able to watch them at all. Um, Was it because they creeped you out? Because they were boring? No, I used to be. I used to have a very. Well, you know that I have a very active imagination. Yeah. So, what? No, no, you don't. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> like I remember when I was. Um, I was in. I guess I was in elementary, and my dad took me to see the movie Deep Blue, Samuel oh, yeah. Jackson, and the shark movie. <laughs> And know, the premise is they give sharks caffeine or something. And the sharks are just like, nope, and starts eating everybody. <laughs> and I was so scared because that movie, I couldn't go into the deep end of swimming pools for years. Really? Like I would go in and I'd just be terrified. And That's it was really just so stupid because it's a swimming pool. You I logically have, know. An, yeah, I have an embarrassing story kind of similar mm. where it was at like a party and, you know, they decided to watch a scary movie. This is before I met my wife is when I was still in Edmonton. And they decided to watch a scary movie. And I'm like, fine, I'll watch it. But then, like, after the scary movie was done, I was just like, oh, my God, I'm moved. like, this is terrifying. But then nobody else really gave a crap. No. And then went outside to go, like, sit by the fire or something like that. And I thought, like, I'm walking towards the fire. And I thought in the corner of my eye, I saw something. So I just, like, get into fighting pose immediately. Mm. Yeah. But there was nothing. Mm. And everybody's just looking at me like, okay. <laughs> mm. Just all staring at me like I'm I'm an idiot, which I was. Like there was nothing there, but it was uh, it was pretty scary. Scary movies are scary, man. I can't do it. No, it's, it's, it sounds like uh, you were or your wife was totally fine with it. Though. She's not scared by it. She just chooses not to now. I you see, I don't know. Like I feel like like the point of scary movies is that you're supposed to get scared, right? I feel like that's what most mm. people enjoy about it. And I think what happened was she enjoyed being scared as a kid. But now that she was an adult and things are like, you know, it's real life and shit. She's like, never mind. Yeah, I, don't be, I don't want to be scared. You know, taxes are scary enough. I don't, <laughs> I don't need to scare you. <laughs> I don't want to yeah. deal with going to work. It's terrifying. Rush out of traffic. <laughs> I, I've seen my gas bill. You know, that's, that's the only scare I need, you know, type of thing. <laughs> I, I find like yeah, scary I mean, movies that have really, well, at least the good ones are like very well directed though. The good ones? Yeah. I've, I've heard good things about scary movies. Like, the problem is I just get too, like you said, active imagination. I just assume yeah. I'm going to get murdered the next day. So I just <laughs> get out. Ugh. Uh, maybe it's because, uh, like, I don't know. If you, I don't seem to get nightmares that much anymore. Mm. Like, I used to a little time as a kid. I don't, like, now I think I wake up, I forget what I was dreaming about right away. Huh. I wonder why that is. Like, you just, mm. either your imagination's crap now, mm. or you're <laughs> one of the, I'm dead inside. That's that's the issue. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> like when I when I do remember my dreams, I actually try to write it down. So I got this uh, journal of strange dreams that that just whatever happens to come in the head at the moment, um, and then I write them down, and they're they're very bizarre. Yeah, they're very unusual. Like uh, I, mean, I remember I had one the other day. Um, I think I was in junior high. I'm, when I'm in junior high, it's always with my friends. So like the key, the key people who are friends of junior high, you're always there. And uh, I think it was, like Austin's always there. And yeah. uh, we're always doing something. There's always like an Aiden McDermott and people always picking on George or whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you just, and, <laughs> you're high. <laughs> yeah. That's I don't funny. know. All my dreams, like high school apparently doesn't exist in my dream world. It's no. only junior high. There's nothing before yeah. or after. It's like, that's, that's the, 
the key go to. And I had the teacher. You remember Miss Stefanich? Yep, she was great. So last night, my dream was Miss Stefanich was giving me an exam, and I was like, "Nope, not doing that exam. No, nope. <laughs> <laughs> not doing it." Uh, for all those viewers, say? for all those viewers, Miss Stefanich was a science teacher. She's the loveliest, most bubbly, energetic woman you ever knew. Um, yeah, she, she'd play she was homeroom. For- yeah, she's homeroom. She played Little Wayne, blasting when you walked into the classroom. Yeah. Um, no, but apparently in my dream, I was like, no, I'm not doing this exam. And I might have even like intentionally tried to cheat. It's just, just, just to say, no, I'm not doing it. That's so funny. Yeah. You never really thought of doing that. You never really thought of standing up to your teacher like that in school. It says, no. no, not. No. Yeah. It's it's I, I it's interesting that you say like junior high is the only one you can remember because I kind of feel the same way. Mm. Like I feel like maybe because they're the most like formative years of your life type of thing. But like the only thing time, thing I remember about high school is when I went, met my wife. Like that's the only thing I remember. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, you had an I mean, exception. You were moving. You were all over the place. I did right? move a lot. I moved yeah. a lot. So that 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 helps you know confirm your memories. I guess. Because when did like, you move oh, exactly? You moved for what? I moved from Edmonton in 2011 to Fort St. John. So I was in Edmonton high school for two years, but, but the, the, but junior high, like the junior high we went to was the longest school I've ever been in. Oh. It was three years. That's the school I was in the longest, no other school I was in that long. Cause like elementary, I was in like three or four different elementaries, only one junior high, but then two high schools. So I moved around a lot. I think the key was that we always had the same kids in the class for every year. Yeah. So yeah. You really got to know those kids well. Yeah, I think the only time we got new people was we got somebody new in grade eight, and then we got Karan in grade nine. It was when Karan showed up? Yeah, yeah, I forgot about him, but now you reminded me. Eh? I forgot about him, but you reminded me now. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Good yeah, times. Yeah. So, yeah, like, I, that's junior high stuck in your head. Yeah. yeah, but then you were there for uni, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I came back for one year for U of A, but then. Uh, I got married, like I brought Whitney with me, my, my fiance yeah, 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 at the right. time. And then it just didn't work out and whatnot. So then we moved back to Fort St. John. So yeah, yeah. I was only, I was only, I'm a university dropout, you know, no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> look at me now. Uh, yeah, yeah. Look at me now, mom. <laughs> yeah, I'm no. on the Chester Sky podcast. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you never know. This might be the next viral thing. Uh, hey, apparently podcasts are huge now. You see the, like all the biggest things like here, Joe Rogan got like the hundred million dollar spotify deal now it's insane yeah like have you ever listened to the joe rogan podcast yeah yeah i listen to stuff all the time okay because i only only ever see the memes off of it (laughs) i never listen yeah yeah, the favorite meme worthy yeah yeah because like the only the my favorite meme was like one where it's like back in the day we didn't have the joe rogan podcast we just had a guy whose older brother was like 30 in the basement and talked about the aliens taking over the white house (laughs) but now you have joe rogan who's making millions of dollars off (laughs) Yeah, day. making millions of dollars to talking about aliens who are still in the basement. <laughs> still in the basement type of thing. It's pretty funny. No, podcast yeah, took over. Fun. I enjoy podcasting. And then uh, esports seems to have not been hit at all. Well, so that's that's an interesting topic. So how, how big are you into esports? Uh, I mean, huge into the StarCraft scene. Um, I yeah, because know everything that's going on in that. You do? Yeah, yeah, okay. Because um, you, you're the one that got me into esports. Yeah, because you, yeah. you introduced me to StarCraft, and then you're like, "Hey, you know, you suck at StarCraft, Greg." And I'm like, "Yeah, it's true." Because like, <laughs> if you want to see somebody good, go watch, you know, like pro StarCraft and whatnot. And I'm like, "Okay, I'm down." Oh, yeah, Husky yeah. Husky StarCraft was the one we watched all the time on YouTube. That guy was the that guy was the thing, man. Was, I really I, that guy was the greatest. You know, he deleted everything now. Did he really? Oh, that's he sad. took down his channel. All the videos are gone. Oh, I wonder why. I just didn't like it anymore or something like that. Well, that's that's the conspiracy theory, right? Why do you take down a whole channel? Something happened. Yeah, something, something happened. big happened. Yeah, but then so you got me into Pro StarCraft, so I was watching that a bunch. But then I got into League of Legends when I moved to Fort St. John, and then at first I wasn't into the esports scene with League of Legends. But then eventually I was like, okay, let's see what you know, like, what what they do for pro sports. Now I watch StarCraft, League of Legends professional pokemon playing and professional smash brothers so Whoa. like i'm like i like I almost spend every single one weekend just watching esports that's all i do <laughs> what <laughs> a is lot pro- of the time what is professional pokemon playing what is that professional pokemon is a little bit more difficult to watch because it's actually run by nintendo 
And Nintendo wants it to be as kid friendly as possible. So there's actually no money. You can't make money on if you go through like the professional like Pokemon. But then you have guys on YouTube who kind of do their own like side hustle type of thing where they go like, you know, private, private leagues and all that stuff. And they kind of like make money on YouTube and whatnot. Like a great guy, uh, Pokeaim ND. Like if you want to watch professional Pokemon, he's, he's great at it. But then like, the legit Pokemon is called VGC, the video game. Uh, sorry, they also have the card games and they have uh, yeah, yeah. a bunch of other card stuff. Games. But like what they do is they have like regional tournaments where you had to follow all of Nintendo's rules and like specifically and like all this really strict stuff. And then eventually they branch out into regionals and eventually they branch out into like nationals and whatnot. So like usually every year they have like this massive multi-international um, uh, video game tournament for Pokemon. It's really cool. So is it, it's not like a card game then it's actually, they train. Well, it's, it's the video game. So like they'll, but they do have the card game as well. They yeah, do have yeah. like professional, like it's kind of like magic the gathering uh, card game oh, stuff Yu-Gi-Oh. It's just, yeah, or yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh, but now it's Pokemon, but like, yeah, they do like, um, so like, for example, Pokemon sword and shield is the newest Pokemon game. Mm. So that's what they all play on. And then you have like, you know, you breed your Pokemon, you make sure they have the correct moves and IVs and EVs. Like it's really, like it's really technical, but uh and sounds then, yeah. like a standing true to the original they actually yeah. level up and they fight each other i think it's it's interesting because i feel like they're trying their best to be as close to the tv show as possible mm. the problem is is that the best way to win a lot of the times is super stally and super like slow paced and whatnot because you know like the tv show was awesome because you'd see ash to go like oh pikachu triple backflip <laughs> springboard thunderbolt <laughs> into like all this crazy stuff whereas yeah. in the in the uh in the video game realm it's all about okay i'm gonna predict he's gonna switch into this pokemon and then reverse switch back into this pokemon and all this stuff so i'm gonna switch my pokemon back into this guy while i'll use this move that doesn't do anything except force him to attack me and it's like all this it's almost like chess really but with pokemon, where it's like you have to do like multi-step predictions and whatnot but then, like, in the end, nothing happens. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> they're, they're both, like, they're both, like, five-heading each other into the, into a state of, like, nothing happens. They thought so, ten movies ahead, so therefore the best move is not to play. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is, like, really, really funny Futurama skit where it's, like, robots playing chess. And yeah. they, don't, they sit there for a couple seconds, don't move. And then the other guy's, like, defeat in three moves. And the guy's, okay, you win. <laughs> type of thing. That's what I imagine Pokemon's <laughs> like. It's like, oh, I've already thought about it, you know, 10 steps ahead. I'm going to win for sure type of thing. So it is it is interesting because there is like RNG elements to it. Like, you know, oh, this move will randomly paralyze you sometimes or this move will confuse you sometimes. And it's like, okay, if he if he guesses correctly and he doesn't get paralyzed, he will win this game. But then he gets paralyzed and you're like, oh, it's... It's over with that now. It's so definitely, it's really, I don't watch it as often, but. It sounds like a lot of the game, you don't really get to see visually. You have to kind of know oh. what's happening. It's definitely one of those type of games where it's like, you need to know what's going on. Because to mm. try to explain it will take way too long for the commentators. And they're just like, you have to know what's yeah. happening or you're just, you're just lost. So, it, but it's actually like, pretty. Yeah. Because he's like, I have these five Pokemon. And you're like, I don't even know what those Pokemon are from an audience <laughs> perspective. If from if you don't know what like it's one of those it's definitely very um insular where it's like once mm-hmm. you're part of the community it's fine but if you're outside the community you have no way of getting in like you have to like work your way in there although i say this and one thing that happened over quarantine though is i got all my nieces and nephews into pokemon mm. like we we actually had a card game tournament with them and their parents because we got their parents into pokemon as well Man. So like we actually had this massive like family battle tournament type of thing where we I mean this was the card games as opposed to the video games but like it was still it was still fun because like we had to sit there and explain okay not only do we have to explain how the cards work we also explain what Pokemon is and, like why it, why it works <laughs> the way it is type of thing mind but you that's pretty, the funnest part is the starting point because then yeah. it's exploring everything right exactly it's all fresh and new and then you, the my favorite part was when like you know you show them one card and they go like oh this is a really strong card i'm like oh yeah sure but mm-hmm. then you like two days later it's like this card that like blows it out of the water and they're just like what what there's <laughs> more there's more <laughs> it's like the original blue eyes white dragon Yu-Gi-Oh card. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. This like, you this card. if you try to use the base set of anything nowadays it's there's no way there's no way you're gonna win because new cards are just have so many more mechanics and whatnot to it that's a yeah. good time. So, like, so esports. So, you just watch StarCraft. That's it. Um. Well, 
it's StarCraft, and then every now and then there's a few YouTube channels I enjoy, like Dunky. Do you know Dunky? Yeah. I love Dunky. Dunky's great. He's so troll. Yeah. <laughs> He's so chill. Sometimes I love he's serious. No, 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 no. He's not serious. <laughs> I, there's another YouTube channel called um, Did You Know Gaming? Where it's basically just like deep dive into video game facts. And they had Dunky on a video. And the mm. entire time I thought he was lying. I thought mm. he was lying about everything. Because he's Dunky. Like you just assume he's being yeah, 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 yeah. You don't know. But then everything he said was completely true. And I was like, what? <laughs> mm. Dunky tells the truth. What is this? <laughs> you don't know how much is true or how much is acting. You have yeah. no idea with some of these guys, right? Although I will admit with Dunky, sometimes he has like some profound thoughts mm. about like, a lot of, <laughs> like, he'll talk about like video game critiques and like what's wrong with the industry and all this in depth stuff. And then the yeah, next yeah. video will be about trains. <laughs> for, like, three minutes. And you're like, wait, what? <laughs> yes. But, yes. And I, I don't know. There's something about the way that guy just lives exists is just very entertaining to see how he lives um i guess pewdiepie was like that too but people just PewDiePie. like you either love him or hate him i suppose but that's kind of why people would draw him in the beginning they just like him mm-hmm. right? yeah yeah i think that's the thing about youtube youtubers because i've been trying to dabble in youtubing oh yeah so, uh check out my channel fake mustache uh Ooh. mlo uh mustache uh, I've been trying to dabble into it and I find like, you know, you could get a lot more views by like playing the most popular game. But in the end, the main thing people need is just as long as they like you, they'll watch whatever you put out. Right. Yeah. It's kind of like influencers, influencers on Instagram. You don't actually care about their, their credentials or anything. You no. just care like you like them. So you just follow them type of thing. Yeah. But I guess that, that's the tricky thing is how do you, you have to get initial following before yeah. it's worth doing it. Right. Yeah, because like, look, for example, I remember I used to watch Dunky before he got millions of views on his yeah, channel. Yeah. And then I remember one day I stopped watching him because I was like, oh, whatever. And then I came back and he suddenly had millions of views on all his videos. I'm like, what happened? Yeah. <laughs> like, sometimes you just get a lucky break and you're now the number one YouTuber, right? So. Well, PewDiePie did the, what was it? It's just a bunch of, uh, I remember it was a bunch of videos where people were just, you move a character and you just kind of smash the character against walls. Oh, yeah. Um, and then that he just played that for like a few months and that's where he got his big break. But he'd been doing videos for like years beforehand and just got nowhere oh, out of it. He just got um, a big break. Yeah. And then I guess once you have the break, then you can really take that to the next level. Right? Yeah. It feels like you get too big to fail at a certain point with YouTube. Yeah. Like I, I remember there's a couple people where they just always had millions of views on their channel. And it's like, why though? <laughs> like, yeah. I don't understand what they're doing that nobody like that nobody else is doing when in reality they're just doing whatever the trend is, but it's them doing the trend. That's what, what people stop to watch. Right. So, yeah. Or what happens is YouTube, at the right point. <laughs> mm-hmm. Or what happens is YouTube partners with you and goes, yeah, every, every other video is a recommended, recommended like smosh video, you know, type of thing. So who knows? Yeah. And then, I mean, some channels didn't make that work though. Like smosh, I don't think is anywhere near as what it used to be. Right. Well, it, it's it's still really big, but it's super different than what it was. Yeah. Like I, did, I think the two guys who started Smosh are no longer affiliated with it. Yeah, yeah. The Anthony Smosh guys going now. But Smosh still exists. So it's like, wait, what? <laughs> like, remember Equals one? 3? Do you remember that one? Oh, yeah. Ray William Johnson. I mean, technically that channel exists, but that channel is not what it used to be. Like that was the guy for the long... When I first started watching YouTube on a regular basis, he was the one I watched all the time. Like it was always Equal 3 and whatnot. But then, yeah, like, like, where is he now? Who knows, right? Well, he's still doing the channel, but he, like, stopped for a while and then tried to come back. Oh. And then he'd lost the the viewership by that point because uh, I guess he hadn't maintained it. Yeah. Uh, the the one, yeah. That, one that got me was Freddie Wong. Do you remember? Mm, yeah. Freddie Wong yeah. and uh, Rocket Jump. Because uh, I, I w- that was, got me into filmmaking was watching these special oh. effects. I was like, this is, this is what I want. I want this. Um, and then, I mean, they, they kind of, I don't know if you can really call them that successful anymore. Something went wrong. Um, but I mean, there's not still making stuff, but it's not like the same viewership and following that used to be. Mm -hmm. I feel like part of the problem that happened, not problem, but I feel like what's happened now with YouTube is that you had those guys make it big, like Ray William Johnson and Smosh and, 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 uh, Freddie Wong, but then so other people then entered the market mm, to try to like right. capitalize on this, and now there's such a big market now that you have no idea who's actually popular because it's so spread out. Among, like I remember watching, you know, like they they had the YouTube rewinds and you love them or hate them. Yes, it was always right. interesting to to see 
if you recognize anybody. Because I remember the first couple of years, I was like, oh yeah, I know that guy. I know that guy. But then eventually it got so big that I was like, I don't know who any of these people are. Yeah. Like, I, like I'd recognize one person. I'd be like, I don't know who anybody else is because YouTube was just that big now. Yeah. That, like they had, you know, like instead of five famous YouTubers, they had 500 famous YouTubers type of thing. Yeah, I still remember when Gangnam Style, the first get to get a billion. Yeah. They made such a big deal about that. Yeah, it was a it was a big deal. Now, like I think Every, a couple of videos have gotten there now, right? Yeah, all the videos, if they're big, have a billion. All of a sudden, mm-hmm. and like, oh, I don't know if you're big yet. <laughs> you don't have. You know, you only have five hundred million. Oh, mm. no, I mean, small fry right now. And then it's like, oh, well, then how do you how do you try to make it big in in YouTube and whatnot? But it's almost like you don't need to make it big. You just need to make it like you know like decent. And then once you got decent, then you're kind of stable for a while. Like like I said, the the YouTubers I watch all have like, you know, like, you know, I think the biggest one I watch is like uh, 250,000 subscribers or something like that. And like, that does, it's not like millions or anything like that, but it's enough that he can make a career off of YouTube type of thing. Yeah. But even, to get, but even to get that point, you have to work for it. But then once you kind of hit that point, then you're kind of settled. But then even he's still trying to get bigger and bigger type of thing. So it's interesting. It's an interesting, like to me, YouTube has always been such a such an example of modern day entrepreneurism because mm. it really like like because when you think about entertainment industries and whatnot the only way you can make it big in the entertainment industry is if you were in hollywood or like okay. or in new york type of thing but now with the advent of youtube and twitch and all that stuff you can make it big no matter where you are type of thing and it really like reconfigured the entertainment industry and allowed it to be more entrepreneurial where before you had to be kind of already in the system. I'm under the impression that it might be like the only way to do it now. Like if you want to start and become into movies or something, it seems like you already have to have a following before you even get in the movie. Mm-hmm. Or yeah. Or, like what's the, what's the alternative? I mean, I guess they still have like schools for acting. Right. But, but I mean, if you're a, let's say I was, I'm a movie director and I'm like, who am I going to pick this unknown actor or this person who already has a following? Yeah. Right. Like, what it seems do? like a cut and dry case, right? Yeah. And then like, I feel like this also talks back into esports at this mm. point. The main reason. So like, if you look at traditional sports, the way they got views and whatnot was by using cable television and whatnot. And if you couldn't get onto like Fox or ESPN, there's no way your sport was going to kick off. But now you have YouTube and Twitch where they have almost more viewers than they do on, on sports networks and they make <laughs> easily. Money now. And that's how esports are, are becoming a thing now. Like, I mean, obviously yeah. it was a thing for a long time, but ability to share it on YouTube and to watch it live on Twitch, you know, people yeah, yeah, yeah. just skyrocketed the industry type of thing. Twitch, Twitch is one of those things that I, it's really surprising to me because it's not like, it's not like YouTube where it seems to have millions and millions of followers the same way. Like you can get big on Twitch with less followers. It seems. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's interesting to think like, what does it mean to be big on Twitch? Mm. Like, I think there's a point in which you have more views, but then there's also the idea of if you have dedicated followers, Mm. then you can also be quote unquote big on Twitch. Cause there's some people who only have like, you know, 50 or a hundred followers, but those 50 or hundred followers are constantly giving them money. So they're (laughs) able to maintain themselves and it just kind of grows from there type of thing. So it's like, even if they, didn't get a lot of views initially because they're able to sustain themselves with that direct income. They can then grow their channel and go from there type of thing. Cause and that's can, the thing I, yeah. Like, and you can always just share that video on the other platform as well. That's not yeah, that's exactly like, it. like I feel like that's almost what every YouTuber does now is they start on Twitch, film their, film the video live in front of all their, all their people who are constantly giving them money live. And then they use whatever clips they have from that to YouTube and then get ad revenue. Cause you can't, there's not a lot of situations where you can give direct money to a YouTuber, but you can easily give direct money to a Twitcher. Yeah. I don't know if that's the correct term, but. <laughs> yeah. It really seems to turn into like a, a rat race. Like uh, all the people who would normally be competing in business. Uh, but for some reason have like some kind of marketing background instead of going into marketing, they seem like, oh, let's, let's give this other avenue a shot. Yeah. Let's just make a YouTube video or Twitch, Twitch channel. Right. And yeah. Hey, if it gets popular, then there you go. Right. Like uh, the other thing that I, I found out recently, not found out recently, but kind of like it got brought up to me recently is the, the reason why so many, um, you know, movies and videos and Twitch and YouTube make so much money is the idea that, 
you, a one person consuming the product does not negate somebody else from consuming the product. That's right. So like you can, you can make this podcast, but you can have a hundred thousand people listen to it without it consuming the product, like getting rid of it, like you mm-hmm. would a normal food. So it makes like, digital like like uh entertainment industry that's why so many entertainment industries make millions and billions of dollars is because like you have this ability to mass hit a mass market without like a lot of effort and without like you can hit so many different consumers at the same time type of thing so it really makes you think about like like you know it's possible for a twitch streamer or a youtuber to be like just so freaking rich because they just have to make one or two videos that just millions and billions of people watch and there you go it's just i don't know it's it's interesting to see how the economy is adjusting to technology it's, it, it's surprising to me like uh i'm trying to figure out how to promote my own things right now and mm-hmm. uh but i've discovered that if you try it on like five different platforms you don't really know which platform is going to work, but sometimes it just <laughs> does on a platform you weren't planning for. Yeah. Um, and I, the one thing that is <clears throat> interesting to me is you don't seem to get to set the price. Like no. When you sell something online, you really have to go for the lowest denominator. Yeah. Cause that's the, that's the negative of the internet is that there's like millions of options. Cause like before you could have your, you know, like you said, you make a deck of cards or whatever. And if you sold them physically in, in person, it would be, you know, only Toronto would be able to buy those cards. But now that you're selling yeah. online, you have such a wider market. That also means you have such, so much more competition and whatnot. So how does uh, it work with uh, selling? I mean, you're in the physical product mm-hmm. industry. you like, like, is it easy to sell stuff online with like that or is that not doable? We, we've been, we've been trying to figure out online for, for since I've been there type of thing. Mm-hmm. Cause the issue that we're, you find with e-commerce and whatnot is that like, you have to put the time and effort into it because if you don't treat it like a new store, it's going to fail and, or it's not going to look as good. So like, I mean, they, the store I work at now, they've been in business for over 50 years so they have the 50 years of experience in a physical store and whatnot that they've already worked on for 50 years and established. But then when it comes to online, they're like, ah, you know, do it in a day. Mm-hmm. And it's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> that's not it's how it works. It's way because, harder. Yeah. Cause there's so many other companies that sell what we do, but like we were able to beat them in town because we were just better physically in town. Like we had the product and we had a good price and people liked us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then when you go online, the only thing people really care about online, like you said, is price and how easy it is to click and access it. So if you can't make your items easy to access and easy to click and go from there, then yeah, it's just, there's no chance for you to, to compete. Cause that's the part that it's like, it's like if you had a physical store, but in order to get into the physical store and find the item you needed, you had to like jump a moat and like do an <laughs> obstacle course and all that stuff. So like if you, if, especially like online, everybody's able to just click one thing and buy an item is look, look, look at Amazon. And like, if you can't do that now, like that's the standard. If you can't do that now, then you're just, there's no way. So like in order to establish yourself online, you have to like jumpstart it 20 years to like where, where the competition is type of thing. It's, it's pretty tricky. Yeah. I, I don't really know how you can assess quality um, unless you look at reviews mm-hmm. uh, online. Like I don't trust them unless there's reviews, it seems. But I also know the reviews are garbage too, but yeah, I see that's the hard part. Trust it. Is like you have to find like, and this is why review things exist on YouTube because you have to find like a person you can trust the review and then just follow them for everything. But it's like if you <laughs> if, like if you're looking up like I had to look up like um, TVs or something like that, and it's like I don't know anybody who knows anything about TVs. So, you know, you start googling it, and it's like, wait, but do I trust the random guy on Best Buy who's it's telling me this stranger? Right? Like, who knows, right? I was watching a YouTube video yesterday and. Uh, it was a BBC documentary where the premise was there's a guy who finds furniture for rich people. <laughs> what a like great that's job. his job is he finds furniture that rich people don't already have. And it's like the most beautiful, <laughs> prestigious furniture. Yeah. And he goes into some Lord British monarchy guy's house and they just kind of tour the house and look at all the fancy decorations. And I thought, oh, okay, this is kind of cool video. And then I look at the comments and it's just hate for pages of how much they hate. I guess just because he's rich and they're just jealous. But it's like, this is not what I expected from the video. It's a perfectly good, happy video. Just, oh, I'm shopping for rich people. And then the video is just so much anger compressed 
for some reason. That's funny. That's, I, yeah, I don't know. Like, I never understood when you see videos that have so many, like, thumbs down or, like, so many hateful comments. Because it's like, if you, if you hate it, don't watch it. <laughs> like, but, like, you're actively watching it to then give a negative comment about it and to thumbs it down or, or whatever. And it's like, you're actually helping them get more views and popularity, even if you think it's negative. Mm. If you don't like it, just don't watch it, man. <laughs> like, it doesn't the thing sense. that surprises me is it's like, I understand if it's like a product or a trailer for video and they're mm-hmm. like, this is something that might affect me or something that somehow I have an opinion about. Yeah. But this is like nothing to do with you. It's a documentary yeah. about two other people. <laughs> that you'll never meet in your entire life. Just hate. I hate this. Such a scumbag. Like, oh. Maybe maybe they were mad because he bought the wrong du- uh, boudoir. You know, well, they found Without. everything that they could find that they just complained about it. Right? Like, oh, yeah. this rich guy. Oh, this bad taste. I don't know. Whatever it was, but uh, it seems to be there's a huge amount of judgment. It doesn't matter what the thing is. They just invites judgment by being on YouTube. Yeah, um, I mean, if you put yourself in the public sphere, I guess you technically uh, open yourself up to public comments and whatnot right like you're you're yeah. actively putting it on youtube so you should like it's this argument of like if you're putting in if you're being a public figure should you be open to hate and whatnot and i feel like this is something that we're as a society gonna have to deal with because it's like there's too many people online who are able to just say such hateful things and be such negative people yeah. without getting smacked in the face for it you know <laughs> And there's like no repercussions. You can literally say whatever the hell you want, but then it's still, but it, it actively impacts the people who put out their work, you know? So like, the thing that I'm curious about is, do you think the comments help the video go viral? That's what I want. I, yeah. It's like the old saying of uh, any publicity is good publicity. Mm. I've, I've seen a couple of news articles where it's like, Hey, this is the most hated, hated video. Like, like, um, <laughs> Say it was a Justin Bieber. Oh no, Friday. Think of Friday by Rebecca Black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People watched it because it sucked, but it still made millions of dollars because more people watch it because they hear how bad it is, so they go watch it. So even if you're like the thing that increases um, views on YouTube are like subscriptions, views, comments, and likes. So even if it's a dislike, it'll still register in the system and whatnot. And if, it, if it's a video, but has like 500 comments and they're all negative, that's still 500 comments. So it's going to increase like but, how but much. But that works you're... if it's like a, some kind of person. But let's say it's your product. You made an advertisement where you're chopping up pumpkins. Yeah. And you've got like millions of hate. Would you still be okay <laughs> with those for, like from a company's perspective? You're trying to sell, legitimately sell your thing. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, yeah. I thought about this before. Like what if, what if you advertise a tool and the tool is just garbage? you know, type of thing. And people start trolling you because it's like, why did you sell this tool and whatnot? But it's like, in the end, like, if it sells, you still sold it, right? (laughs) So like, (laughs) like if if I made a commercial Mm. that uh, got absolutely trolled by everybody in the world, but we still sold six kits. Hey, you know, that's more kits than I was going to get by not making the video. Like it's, that's, that's always the the catch 22 of it. It's like, you want to put out a good product. You want people to like it. But if they don't like it, but you still make money off of it, is like, did you really fail? You know, type of well, thing. What if it's the flip side though? It's uh, the product's fine, no problem with the product. Mm-hmm. But there's just so much hate in the video for other reasons, mm, like the Peloton ad that had the, like the lady who was terrified. Did you ever I hear seen that one? No, what's this? So it was um, last Christmas, I'm pretty sure. And Peloton came out with this ad where a guy got his wife or girlfriend a Peloton bike. But the way they shot it, she looked terrified. Like she was being held hostage. And if she didn't ride the Peloton bike, she would be murdered. Like that's how she looked. Like you'll have to, you'll have to Google it. It's hilarious. And it got so much attention because everybody was like, who cares if the product's good? What's wrong with this lady? Like, like what's, what's happening here? And it gave a lot of negative feedback to Peloton because it was like, what are you doing to your actresses? Like they look terrible. But then what happened was Peloton got a lot of advertising from it. And then Ryan Reynolds picked up the lady who did the ad and now she's doing other work, you know, type of thing. Oh, wow. So it's like, it's, so like, it's a funny thing where it's like, it started off super negative, but then, like I said, people made money off of it. So is it really a failure when it comes, it comes to that? I guess it depends how smart you are to deal with the popularity. Yeah. Do you know how exactly. to use it like later? You can, if you can capitalize on it, then it's a, like, you can make it work. The only issue is, is like when you start getting death threats 
And when you start getting like such negative stuff that it's like mentally, you know, damaging and whatnot and emotionally damaging, then it's like, okay, this is way too far. Like I, like it blows my mind that there's no way for the police to track down people who send you death threats online. Or it's like not that. Any- it's just, I don't think it's credible. That's the issue. Uh, but like, I feel like, there's got to be a way to tra- like crack down on that. Like even look at like Twitter and Facebook, what happened with the presidential election in 2016, like they were like evidence. It was influenced by bots and like trolls from a different country and whatnot. And like, they just didn't know at the time. Like, it's crazy that that was okay at the time that everybody was like, Oh yeah, you know, just, you know, random racist guy is screaming on Twitter. I'm going to vote for Trump, you know, type of thing. And it's just well, like, but how would you know whether, like, it's, how would you know if it's worth the time to invest in investigating something yeah. like that? I think that's the issue. I guess. Yeah. You like, you get a death threat from a guy who's just horrible. But then you find out it's like a 10 year old the other day. Like, oh, but they should learn. Like, they need to, they need to be punished to learn that this is not okay. Cause eventually, like, what mm. happens is, you you're okay with like a 10 year old sending you a random death threat then that 10 year old goes oh this is okay now and then grows up and sends random people death threats mm. now there what happens is he actually proceeds with it because he's like oh apparently it's okay to do this or he gets reper- like eventually repercussion happens to him like in real life or something like that yeah so i feel but- like this is just something that like i mean obviously i'm not a tech like a super tech person i'm not you know bill gates or anything like that so i have no yeah. idea how this would be possible but i feel like this is something they should try to work on you know it feels in my opinion it feels something important that they should try to and again this is also the issue of you know the internet is international so it's like you'd have to have every country kind of agree with this yeah yeah. you have to track the guy in india yeah like ip addresses (laughs) and whatnot so it's a tough one i was i was uh saw some unique things on twitter recently um people there's a lady who made it started posting says um there is something going strange in my house. Okay. I'm like, ooh, and like, I don't know what to do. Uh, I might, I'm in danger. I'm scared. And people are like, ooh, well, this is interesting. Let me read these tweets. And they start coming in little short bursts, bit by bit. And the tweets are like, uh, so I got a house and uh, I see there's someone's made like a dream catcher, but it's made in a very strange way. There's like blood all over it. And it's right outside my house. I'm like, ooh, this is creepy. And then she's like, she, the story progresses on through tweets mm-hmm. and there's like a few released every day and it goes on for like a, a, a month or two um, and it progresses and there was a lady outside the house and she was staring at me. And then she like puts photos of like the things and this lady had no eyes. Like, no. And so she builds this narrative and uh, it turns into this very engrossing story and gets lots and lots of followers. And by the end of it, you realize it's just work of fiction the things that happen are impossible. Yeah. But you don't know that in the beginning. And it seems to be such an effective tool to get followers. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a slippery slope right there. Cause what if somebody starts like calling the police, like this woman's about to get murdered on Twitter. (laughs) Well, that's what one of the things is like, I don't, one of her tweets was like, I don't know to where to call the police. And I was like, Oh, Oh, she's playing the game. Yeah. She's really trying to work with it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause like what happens if somebody actually does, I mean, obviously people shouldn't go on Twitter to try to like tell people I'm getting murdered, but like, what if somebody actually was in trouble and is like the only way I can communicate right now is by tweeting. But I was like, ah, oh, they're just going it for the views type of thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, on one hand, it seems like it's manipulative. On the other hand, if I were thinking from like, I want to make something go viral yeah. Because it sounds like she's got, she's potentially getting a book deal out of this because really? people want to see the next installment of the story, <laughs> right? Because it's, it's so a funny. really effectively written uh, horror story, work of horror. Yeah, uh, and it feels real. It's engrossing. It seems like it's happening in real time. It's like the mm-hmm. next level of storytelling. That's cool. Like when you think about it from that perspective, like yeah, it's just art form at that point, right? Like sounds like a, a, the next way to go maybe is to make YouTube channels where you slowly sound like you're investigating a murder or something. <laughs> you're about to die. <laughs> yeah, you're slowly discovering clues. Yeah, didn't they? Didn't they have a movie kind of like that where it was the guy who played Sulu on the new Star Trek? Ooh, and like and this. like his daughter goes missing, so he like tries to find her via Facebook and whatnot. But like the entire movie shot from like the computer slash the camera perspective or something like that. Oh, that sounds cool. I can't remember what it's called, but apparently like, I'm pretty sure there's like a kind of a similar thing where you're like building this horror narrative, but only using the perspective of like social media and whatnot. It's pretty cool. 
That sounds like it's a full movie, though. That doesn't sound that like it. That is a full a, movie. Yeah, okay. it's a full movie. But you know what's funny is there's actually a TV uh, episode of Modern Family that kind of used the same concept, except it wasn't a horror thing. It was it was comedy, obviously. But it was like they somebody was missing. So they were using like Facebook and Instagram and try to, but it was all filmed from like, you know, somebody's laptop type of thing. Like it was, it was, it was yeah. very interesting that way. So yeah, the interesting I think, thing with that is if you were to spread it out instead of like a full video, if you were to spread out installments, you could like interact with whoever your audience is and use yeah. that as part of the engagement cool. the crowd. Yeah. Yeah. Like get people's reaction incorporated into the, into the story type of thing. Well, the thing that was really cool for me at PewDiePie was the Reddit threads. So he started saying just like the fans of his would put like memes of him on the Reddit and he would look (laughs) through the Reddit and that was his video. Oh, meme review. Yeah, meme review. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's playing off the the crowd. That is the source material. Well, I I feel like that's why Twitch is so popular Mm. isn't because like it's like one the content but the fact that you can like instantly interact with the you like the streamer and whatnot is like yeah. what really gets people involved and whatnot because it's like i remember one time i was watching a really small streamer but like i liked him on youtube and he's like oh i have a twitch so i'm like i'm gonna hop on the twitch and like you know i just was i normally don't like uh type in the chat because i don't really care but then mm-hmm. one time i was like oh you know i think is this it? would be really funny if you did this so like i typed something in the chat and then he said my name <laughs> and I immediately just like in orphans and whatnot in my head. I was like, man, he said my name. <laughs> you thought you were a bystander. You're not a bystander. No, not a bystander. You're actually involved in whatnot. Like it's, it's crazy how much, like I didn't even, like I, like I said, I don't normally interact with chat, but like mm. the one time I did, I got like actual interaction. I was like, oh my gosh, you know, type of thing. So I feel like it's interesting how just that little bit is enough to like, like that social interaction is enough to like, even though you're not physically in the room together, yeah. it's enough to, to get you going type of thing. So, and it builds well, that's relationships. The, that's the strange part with uh, the live feed is they can break the fourth wall. Yeah. Right. Like you think this is not you, this is unrelated to you. Yeah. It's I was like watching- if you were watching Avengers Endgame and you were able to like get into that final giant crowd scene. Like, mm. you're, like you were there and you were there type of thing. It'd be like so much more impactful and whatnot. It'd be cool. Well, did you see the Starcraft where, or the basketball games where people started like having images of oh, themselves like in the faces? audience? Yeah, yeah. Like it was like screens or something like that. Yeah, I thought that was bizarre. It was it was weird. Like um, I think a couple other places had that too. Like I think uh, uh, League of Legends had it too in their Chinese league and whatnot. Like it's, it's pretty, fun. but I mean like, Hey, that's what people liked about basketball and all the traditional sports was physically being there. Right. So there's uh, some video games that do it. Um, I think there's one called undertale. Um, and like in some parts of the game, they react to you specifically. Yeah. Like, I don't, I think they read your memory card or something and then they'll mention yeah. stuff that they shouldn't know. Yeah. Like they'll, they'll say your real name or something like that. Like, yeah. um, there's also like Doki Doki literature club would like delete itself off of your computer at one point or something like that. Oh, like what? Some, like it would, it would find a way to like manipulate your memory folders where it would like hide itself or like manipulate it on your computer. Ooh. And just like, Whoa, <laughs> like, it was getting a little too, a little too weird for me. Turning into a virus takes over your computer, but in part of the game, <laughs> part of the game, you're in the game. It's very, um, black Ooh. mirror, very black mirror. Well, I can't wait till VR stuff becomes the norm. Like when they figure out all of the, glitches and glitches. get that stuff out the way yeah i think it's going to be incredible like do you think it's going to be like you know put put a helmet over your head and like lay down in a bed or do you think it's going to still be like motion control type of thing um have you seen the videos where they do uh, vr futuristic shopping no so where essentially the idea is you walk down the street you're wearing they were kind of trying to promote this Google Glass, but it never really okay. took off. And never just did. like things are flying in front of your face, like <laughs> pop-ups and yeah. you, you look at this and there'll be like a, a banner of information about the thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't see why that wouldn't be doable. Um, Other than the fact people will be so distracted they're like walking into walls. <laughs> type of thing. Yeah, it's the danger hazard for sure. But yeah, yeah I, why did Google Glass not take off? What happened there? That was meant I to be feel great. like it was 
the issue, like you were saying, or not you were saying, but like it, there's too much stuff in front of your face when you're trying to do, because the point of Google Glass was like you were supposed to be able to do your normal stuff while also having like a video or something playing at the mm. same time right on your face. And it just like was too complicated to actually work and whatnot before like uh, yeah. throwing up and like, whoa, what's happening here? So, although the other one I remember they were talking about was um, something to do with Xbox where it was like augmented reality with Xbox where you'd be able to play certain video games. Like, like you have a table, but then it would put like the video game on the table, like Minecraft and whatnot. You'd have this like crazy Minecraft world. Okay. Like that, that they mentioned like five, six years ago. Haven't mentioned since. I think it was called Surface or something like that. No. Surface. No, because I, I think Surface is the name of their tablets. But like there's something crazy with that Microsoft was working on where they were trying to make like augmented reality a thing. Ooh. But yeah, I haven't heard about it in, in years now. Like it's it's weird. But like That's VR, okay. the only VR experience I've really had was I had a buddy who had a machine. He's like, yeah, you know, come come check it out. And like like I, the ones where you didn't have to move were fine. Like Beat Saber was really cool. Yeah, Beat Saber, like yeah. having like having the giant blocks fly at you was actually like, oh my gosh, like what's happening here? But then like the ones where you had to move, I immediately was like nauseous. Yeah, it makes you nauseous for some reason. Yeah, but I, like, let's I assume think- they fix that issue. Oh yeah, uh, I can see that. Like my idea is that's going to be the next Amazon shopping. Oh really? You pick up the thing, you look at it. Yeah. You're like, this is the item. I can decide whether to. I like the way it looks. Uh, I don't see why that wouldn't be doable. And then you can actually like, you know, like put it in your living room and like see how it looks in your living room type of thing. Uh, well, you're holding it in your hands essentially. You probably can't wait feel the weight but you could no no no. but i mean like like. if you want to make sure the couch will fit you can have like a full (laughs) a full couch vr couch but would that be vr or ar i don't even know sounds like you're talking about holograms now holograms i thought that's what you were talking about so i don't know uh i guess that's another way too i was thinking you still have the glasses on so you still can't see outside of the oculus thing they got a new thing now it's not rift anymore now they got some new i don't know do they yeah i'm I'm so bad at you I'm I don't so know. I don't own a set, but uh, I'd, <laughs> yeah. I'd love to when they fix out the glitches. But I just, it just sounds like right now it still needs to iron out some wrinkles to go. Work out some kinks. Yeah, it's interesting. Cause yeah, I've heard some, like a lot of, I've heard people talk about VR and like mm. they've said, like, you know, the motion sickness thing is a, is a big issue that they're trying to work on. Like, I guess there was one game where like they found if you just had like a, a leaf fly by your face or something, it's like enough point of a reference, you can kind of like, mitigate the motion sickness or whatever like the one that really bothered me the most was like this really weird gladiator game Mm. where it's like you just have a bunch of guys coming at you murder them but to move you had to like grab the environment and like pull yourself forward Mm. and that's really what got me messed up because it was like the world's moving but my body's not type of thing like that was that was fighting biology yeah, like it's 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 not what God intended, you know, <laughs> type of thing. Well, I can't even handle Portal 2. I've tried, been trying to beat this game for a while, but I get nauseous every time I go through it. Oh, really? Yeah, I can't oh, handle it. I get yeah, the, I'm, sick. I'm, <laughs> too, too fast for you? But I love the game and I love the concept, but I just, yeah. I can't, my brain can't deal with moving yeah. into one another and back and forth. Yeah, there was some. I remember there's some puzzles in Portal 2 where I'm like, I gotta look it up because I got like, I have no idea what's going on. Like, the geography was beyond me, (laughs) type of thing, (laughs) or whatever you want to call it. Geometry is the correct word, but yeah, like angles and crap. And it's just like, geez, what's happening? But then you watch a YouTube video and it's like, hey, put this goo here. And it's like, oh, okay. Well, the last time I played, um, last time I played uh, Portal 2, I was, uh, I had an experience where part of the game was also influenced by things outside of the game oh what do you mean so i was in a level where there's water where it sounds like this drip there's like some kind of liquid area and i hear drip 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 and i'm like okay that's part of the game <laughs> and apparently it wasn't part of the game um <laughs> your house is flooding <laughs> so <laughs> um at a certain point uh i the, the water's like pretty loud dripping <laughs> So I, I, at a certain point, I take off the headphones and the dripping continues. I'm like, this is not a good sign. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I look around and um, on the other side of the room, uh, there I noticed that I have a painting of a tiger um, and I have a finger uh, and the tiger's face is kind of like 
blurring and uh, like melting. Oh no! And uh, I'm like, that's that, I don't remember the tiger's face doing that. And I realized it's because <laughs> there's some liquid that's on it that's the uh, smudging it as it, the liquid falls down it. So I, I go over to the the thing and I'm like, okay, where's this liquid coming? And I look up, and the ceiling is dripping water. Oh no! From uh, whoever was the tenant upstairs. I, I never found out what it was because that was the day before I really? left, before I moved. Oh. So, <laughs> uh, so oh, that, that thing's dripping, that thing's, um, and that, all, all the stuff around is getting wet. So I move all the stuff out the way. Um, I, I go to sleep. I move the next day. I move all my stuff out of it. And just as I'm leaving, uh, then the water is like, <laughs> and I leave oh. the house and never look back. <laughs> never came back. So... <laughs> I'm guessing the whole house collapsed, or at least the ceiling collapsed yeah. from the water, but it, it had nothing to do with me. It was whoever's doing upstairs. You just dipped. That's so funny. <laughs> like, like did here. you take your damage deposit back? Or? Uh, I was paying month to month. I didn't have a damage deposit in Toronto. Really? I didn't have to do that. That's funny. You just um, dipped, like, not my problem. <laughs> well, it wasn't my fault anyways. It was whoever's no. upstairs. They have some major <laughs> water issues. I don't know what. They blew up a sink or something. Yeah. That's funny. And then you still, and that's, that's, that's why you can't be Portal 2, man. Yeah. That's why I can't be Portal 2, man. It's because your house keeps flooding. Oh, <laughs> it's because uh, my, the game comes out into real life. Yeah, you yeah. see, it's got meta levels in there. The, the ultimate VR, yeah. <laughs> uh, wouldn't that be a great game, though, if it was, there was something like that? Where it came out in real life? Yeah. Wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah. I don't know, like, what game would... I mean, in the end, my greatest dream like if i had a genie or like a, a wish or something mm. would be pokemon to be real that's all i want like like i love pokemon to no end the video games are great but what i want is like be like a vr pokemon like world and whatnot it'd be so it'd be so cool well that's the premise behind pokemon go isn't it yeah pokemon go like uh, did you get into it or are you still playing or? uh well when it was at the peak of its height i didn't have data oh <laughs> So, and I had an iPhone four, which apparently yeah. was just a little bit too old to download yeah. the game. Because this was 2016 when it came out. So iPhone four came out what, like 2013 or 2012 the, or something. I like kept that. that iPhone four until like 2018. I kept that Jeez. phone for long. Well, That's I only, cool. but I got it what in 2000. I kept it till 2019. That's yeah. insane, dude. No data, iPhone 4, couldn't use any new apps, couldn't even like download a Tinder app. Like it was too, <laughs> it was too obsolete. That's um, so funny. No. But like, I remember, I remember Pokemon Go came out. It was summer 2016 and it was, it was okay game. Like it was very like novelty type of thing. Yeah. My issue with it was just like, like there's, this, I like Pokemon a certain way and it was just like a different way of playing Pokemon that I didn't enjoy as much because it was more about trying to catch as millions of Pokemon as you want or as you, as you can. But my favorite way to play Pokemon is like, these are the six I like, these are the six I'm sticking with and that's it. But like the, the, the way Pokemon go is, is like, Oh, don't catch one Spearow, catch a million Spearows and get rid of 99,000, you know, type of thing. And I was just right. like, yeah, it's not for me type of thing, but. Well, I'm surprised so yeah, there wasn't as many variations. I would have thought they'd have more dueling variation of Pokemon. Yeah, like they've they've expanded a lot. Like I listened to a Pokemon podcast and they talk about like Pokemon Go a lot. And apparently it's a way different game than what it was before. Yeah. Like they have like way more Pokemon in it. They actually have battling in it now. Like oh, they brought battle. that in. That's what they I thought. In. Where's the battling? Where is that? Yeah. Like the best part about Pokemon, <laughs> they didn't have it. <laughs> like it's funny how like they were like, oh, everybody loves catching. That's the best part about Pokemon. It's like, no, I want to <laughs> fight somebody. <laughs> what are you talking about? What but I like they, they're just battling to it and it's it's apparently really good now. But like I still am like, no, I'm good with just old school Pokemon. So yeah. It's funny. No, but uh, so let's say they did make uh, a Pokemon in real life. Some well, not real life, but like, like VR somehow. Well, I don't know, is it VR? But somehow it interacts with like your real life, though. Oh, so like AR, then yeah, yeah, yeah. Somehow it does. Um, this like, is interesting. They've actually kind of did. Oh, so uh, I don't know if it's actually live yet. I think it is, but they designed a Pokemon game where it taught kids to brush their teeth. 
Ooh. And it was like on your phone and like you could record yourself, like you'd record your kid brushing, not record, but like, you know, have the camera looking at the kid as he brushing teeth. And then like the Pokemon would react to the way the kid is brushing their teeth and whatnot and like give them points and like teach them how to do a better and whatnot. So it's like, it's coming, Josh. It's coming. <laughs> well, you can have like games where you have characters who interact. So actually I was having this conversation with another guy. Where apparently in, um, I think, like, India or China, we used to hire people just to be in the house. What? Like a server? Like, you'd have a butler. You'd have yeah. a maid. And they were just there. <laughs> Wait, right? they didn't do anything? Like, they do a chore now and then. But it was like a status <laughs> thing, right? Oh, really? You'd have people in the house, and somehow that made you feel like you were important or something. That's so uh, funny. We don't do that anymore, really. No. <laughs> it's not a common thing. Um, but apparently in... Uh, some parts you can still hire. I don't know if it's Japan or China where you can still hire people to do that. Um, and you can hire people to just be there. It's like, um, yeah, just your homies. Yeah, you know? <laughs> like, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, like, like a homie. Yeah. Like when, when, fo- when famous rappers and whatnot, just have that entourage that don't actually do anything. They're just there to hang out and whatnot. Yeah. Like That's a fake so entourage. Funny. Well, See, I, like, I, imagine I, if you were studying and you had like someone over your shoulder you feel like you're obligated to study harder, right? Yeah, that's true. You got more um, um, keep you on your toes type of thing, more responsibility. So my thought is, why couldn't you at some point have like a VR babysitter? <laughs> right? Or Just someone's like, okay, you need to stop eating Cheetos and playing Smash Bros. You need to that's get funny. some exercise. And, and that thing would like be there. Like a little, I don't know, like a little devil or angel over your shoulder yeah. telling you, hey, do the thing. It's like if your Amazon Alexa or whatever was exactly. blind or off and you're sitting down. And exactly. Like, or like, like that, you know those, sorry, go ahead. Like that's totally doable in the next few years. You could have Alexa have a personality and telling you to get your act together. <laughs> yeah, get some exercise, you idiot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then we just let the robots take over. Yeah. <laughs> Who yeah. says they're not meant to? Yeah, that's true. You keep it kind of reminds it. me. It kind of reminds me of the Duolingo, all those memes where it's like, you're not learning Spanish. I'm coming to murder you right now, type of thing. <laughs> like, where it's like the Duolingo birds coming for you, type of thing. It's like, oh, you're not exercising. Alexa's gonna beat you in the butt, type of thing. <laughs> I think it would be quite effective, especially if it's like I, one suited to your personal mm-hmm. daily routine. Well, I mean, they, it could even like give you advice and tips. And like, okay, imagine this: you had a VR Gordon Ramsay in the kitchen, <laughs> just and you're cooking your dish, and you're like, I don't know what to do because you can do this with Alexa right now. You can just say, "I need a recipe." Yeah. But imagine there was like a some kind of fake character there who's telling you, "Okay, here's how we want to cook it." <laughs> like, I think that would be fun. That would be, It'd be awesome. Pretty fun. It's just kind of like masterclass, but like way more personalized. Of personalized like, master, like, yeah. You can actually tell VR uh, Gordon Ramsay to be like, hey, I have an egg. How do I beat it? And he's like, you're an idiot. How do you not know how to beat an egg? (laughs) Personally, (laughs) you know, type of thing. And it wouldn't even, I don't think it would be too far. So let's say what you need is, you don't even need to have the glasses for that. You put like maybe some trackers Mm -hmm. uh, on you. And then you could even watch this on your TV. And the guy could, it's just a, I don't know, animated character telling you, hey, do the thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess it'd be better if it was the hologram must be or something. I think hologram would be the next step. Like it'd be so cool to have a hologram or like an Android or something. Why is that? Like um, in, future, in Futurama, they have androids where you can make them look like whatever famous person you want. Like Fry gets mm-hmm. a Lucy Lou Android and whatnot, and that's like a whole storyline. Imagine if you had like you know a Gordon Ramsay Android or something like that just hanging out. The only problem is then my wife would be like, "Oh, Gordon Ramsay, how you doing?" You know. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> could talk back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the only issue. Well, Androids are definitely really expensive and a little bit far. I mean, the thing that surprised me is why are holograms so far? Like, yeah. Why is that not even close? Well, like remember they had um, Tupac Shakur at Coachella like a couple of years ago, and like it was this crazy hologram technology where yeah. it was like he's on stage. They just never talked about it ever since. This was like 2012 or something like that. Yeah, and they just never talked about it ever again. It was I like, think maybe it's way harder than we thought. Hey? Maybe it's really difficult. 
Oh yeah, maybe it's super expensive. Like only only Beyonce can afford <laughs> holograms. Yeah. Well, they had a demo here in Toronto uh, last year where they brought in the Black Eyed Peas hologram style. Oh, and uh, they were dancing around. And you could go on stage and walk right through them because they're holograms. Yeah. Uh, but in order to do that, they had to have things like on each part of the stage, mm-hmm. so like on top and the bottom. So. Maybe that's the issue. We think holograms are just something you can just project like a projector. Yeah. But maybe you, something you'd have to set up like a surround system in your house. Yeah. Way more complicated. Well, they have that um, Japanese virtual idol, Hatsune Miku. I saw her live. Did you really? So what was that set up? Uh, I went to a Lady Gaga concert and she was the opening act. Really? Well, one of the opening acts. There was some other Lady Starlight. Uh, but the, the hologram was one of them. Um, and people, I didn't know who she was, but people were <laughs> going crazy for her. Yay, yeah. hologram. Um, like, what was it like? Did it, was it just a bunch of screens and she like ran across the screens or was it like an actual hologram? No, it was a hologram. It was like the two-pack hologram. Okay. Except it's a anime character. Yeah, yeah. So the, so the technology is there. It's just for some reason they're not giving it to the masses. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. It, it, it has, it's been there for years, by the looks of it. It must be a cost thing where it's just too expensive to to make it reasonable for everyday people. It's like how drones used to be, you know, nobody had a drone it was, except for the military because it was too expensive. But then now mm. every five-year-old has a drone, you know, type of thing because they eventually made the technology so much cheaper. Yeah. What happens to that dropship Amazon stuff? Is that like, that doesn't, I'm not getting any packages by drone yet. <laughs> yeah, I think that was just in big, big cities, like in the states and whatnot. So, and I think it just depended on if your country was okay with it, type of thing. Like you, I could, you thought drone, here. could you imagine a drone trying to fly in like minus 40 degree weather in Canada? <laughs> it would yeah, die. I deal with snow. That's right. Yeah, I mean, Toronto it. doesn't get snow anyways, you bunch of fake Canadians. But Yeah, people here <laughs> complaining. I'm like, no, 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 you don't know what No, no, like. you don't know what real snow yeah, is. No. <laughs> That's okay. funny. But uh, no, I'm, I, I didn't understand why we don't have um, more of that hologram stuff. That was really surprising yeah. to me. It's a it's a mystery. Like we maybe we got a maybe it's like a deep state type of thing where it's like oh the holograms were taking over. We got we got to shut down the program. Like it was about mm. to become the Matrix, you know, <laughs> or something like that. Well, my dad goes for rants. I don't know if you remember my dad. He's always ranting about stuff. Yeah. Uh, he's always going for rants about holograms. Um, he's like one piece of it apparently has all the information of the bigger piece. And if you like take a small slice of a hologram, somehow it has all the information of everything else. I don't really know how it works, but apparently there's something in holograms that are like that. It's like apparently all lasers are somehow like that. Really? Um, Yeah. Where if you looked at a like projector, I don't know if it works with the two bag example, but something to do with the general idea of a hologram, you take the big thing and you look at the smaller part of it and it has all the information of the bigger piece. Hmm. which that's, sounds like cool <laughs> it sounds cool yeah that sounds like a really great way to transfer information but like mm. i don't understand how that like is something evil you know <laughs> yeah that's funny yeah i, guess I actually like, gotta go i forgot oh, to tell sure. you i gotta leave at five but uh well it's funny we were gonna talk about esports and then we <laughs> eh, i'll do it another time We'll do it another time. So we'll definitely have to come back on here. But it was, it was great catching up. Well, one other thing we we're going to talk about was, uh, so what's what's going on with these cards you were telling me about? Oh, uh, okay. Um, yeah, so let's talk about this one. Uh, there's one, a game that's out now called Chess, but way cooler. And uh, the premise of the game is you have cards. And the cards you play while you're playing a regular game of chess. So if you know how to play chess... Uh, this game will make some sense to you. If you don't know how to play chess, then imagine that there's Yu-Gi-Oh! At the same time, you can move things on the board that are not cards. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you do play chess, imagine that you're playing a game of chess and then you also have Yu-Gi-Oh! cards. <laughs> so so um, you move a piece on the board and you play a card and the card lets you, for example, swap your pieces around or it lets you bring a piece back to life or it kills a piece, or um, essentially all the benefits of uh, a card game like Hearthstone or Yu-Gi-Oh! or Magic the Gathering, we Mm -hmm. put that and included that in a game of chess. That's cool. Yeah. 
So that's the general gist. And it's available right now on ChesterSky.com. You can uh, go to that website and you can uh, check out the game right now. It's available. You can get it delivered. Uh, it's a... Uh, the people who have played chess before are raving about it from what I've seen. Uh, nice. The people who don't understand chess don't understand what this game is at all. <laughs> uh, but I'm hoping to change that sooner or later. Do you get sent to the shadow realm when you lose, just like in Yu-Gi-Oh? <laughs> no, no. Now, the other <laughs> weird thing about that I've tried to do with this game that we created is uh, make sure that it stays true to real chess. So oh, it's, okay. it does not change the game of chess. It just adds on to it. Just adds on to it, but yeah. there's All no shadow realm. If you know exactly how to play chess, you already know how to play this game. Perfect. No, it sounds yeah. like a good time. Well, thanks for coming on the show, man. Yeah. Uh, it's good thanks catching up. Me. And uh, yeah. hope to do this again soon. Yeah, we'll definitely have to do it. Uh, if anybody's interested, like I said, comic book gentlemen for all your comic book uh, conversations, and then feel free to check me out on YouTube and Twitch at Fake Moustache. 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 Butch at fake moustache. Butch at fake moustache.